Hello and welcome. This is the uh, Unit 6, Lesson 7 that begins on page 343. So if you don't have that out already, go ahead and pause and then open up to 343. Um, and before we start with the page, I wanted to just give a little brief reminder about what parameter is and how we can use the definition of parameter to answer some of these questions that we have here. So. Um, earlier we talked about the perimeter is the distance around the shape, so if you have a, a rectangle, um, it's the, the length of this side plus the length of this side plus the length of this side and the length of that side, and the equation version of what I just said is P equals length plus width plus length plus width, so just counting up the distance of the whole side all the way around the shape, not skipping anything and not counting anything twice. Now because of the commutative property of addition, we can rearrange this equation, this is basically the same thing, to be parameter equals length plus length, so that would be like this side and this side, plus width plus width, and that would be that side and that side. And so that's like the same thing, right? And then because of how addition is, or multiplication is repeated addition, we know that length plus length, well that could just be written as two length, right? And then width plus width, that could be just written as two width. And because of that, um, and if two length and two width equals the perimeter, then we know half of the perimeter is equal to just one length and one width. Now, that sounds like a whole lot of mumbo jumbo, but simply what that means is if someone says a rectangle has a perimeter of 10, what are the possible lengths of the sides? Well, you could think, okay, what's half of 10? 5. And then what are all the things that add up to 5? Well, there's 1 plus 4, which would mean a rectangle that has one, and then one, two, three, four, and then one, one, two, three, four, like that. Or it could be two plus three, which would look like one, two, and then one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. So like a taller but a bit um, more narrow one. Uh, and I think that's it for that number. Yeah, so it would be those two choices. And then if you look at these ones, if it is 1, 1, 4, 4, and this one is 2, 2, 3, 3, we can double check, and 1 plus 4 is 5, and 1 plus 4 is 5. So the perimeter of this is 10, and the perimeter of this one, 2 plus 3, is 5, and 2 plus 3 is 5, and the perimeter of that one is also 10. So all we did was we took the given perimeter, cut it in half, and then figured out what possible add-ins we could have that would add up to that total. Alright, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. Starting with um, number 1 on page 343. So it says, on a centimeter dot grid, and I've attached one. If you don't have a printer, that's okay. You can just kind of draw it out like I did in this example and just label your sides like this. But I will attach one that you could print out that might work for you. Okay, so it says, sorry. <laughs> it says, uh, draw all possible rectangles with a perimeter of 12 centimeters and sides who are, are whole centimeters. Now that's important because lengths could be, you, you know, how there's decimals and like things that are less than one. You could really have infinite possibility, but because they're whole, it is limited to just a few options. Um, label the lengths of the two adjacent sides of each rectangle, and then we're going to go ahead with um, the follow-up questions after. So, 12 is the whole perimeter. Now we ask ourselves, what is half of 12? Or what times 2 is 12? Think about it, and it's 6, right? So if we have different things that add up to 6, that could be 1, 
and one, two, three, four, five. Right, that adds, adds up to six, one plus five. And then one, one, two, three, four, five. And if we double check, six plus six, yeah, that is twelve. Okay, that's one option. Another one would be two, one, two, and then six equals two plus what? It's four, right? So one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four. If you double check, two, four, two, four, two plus four, six, two plus four, six, and then it's 12 as the perimeter. Let's do another one. We could have one, two, three. Here, I'll use a different color. One, two, three. On one side, and three plus what is six? So it's three. One, two, three. And this one is actually, oh my gosh, you guys, all the sides are the same length. What do you call that? It's a square. But is it still a rectangle if it's a square? You bet it is. Of course. All squares are rectangles. Okay, so we have a adjacent sides are 1 and 5, adjacent sides are 2 and 4, and adjacent sides are 3 and 3. So we're going to fill this in here. So 1 and 5, 2 and 4, and 3 and 3. Now, um, we're using this table to now find the area of each of those, and if you're not remembering, we could simply count the squares inside, and this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can also multiply the adjacent sides, and we already found them, so this would be 1 times 5, and stop and ask yourself, does that make sense? A rectangle with a 1 by 5 would be 1 times 5 and have 5 squares, does that make sense? I think so. Let's chop up this one. We can count these squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We can also multiply the adjacent sides. So that would be, asking ourselves, 8. Is that, um, oops, 4 times 2? Yes, it is. 8 is 4 times 2. And then this last one, we can chop it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're asking ourselves, is nine three times three? Yes, it is. So this should all make sense. Um, so let's go ahead and fill that in. So one times five was five square centimeters. Two and four, two times four is eight centimeter squares and 3 times 3 is 9 centimeter squares. Okay, number 3, it asks us, compare the shapes of the rectangles with the least and greatest areas. So the least area is the smallest number, which is 5, and I would describe that as kind of longer, well, the, the, the opposite, or the adjacent sides are far from each other, and then the one with the greatest area is when the adjacent sides have the same length. So let's write that out. So the greatest area is in the rectangle with adjacent, I spelled adjacent wrong, adjacent sides that are equal period, make that period, the least area has very different lengths of adjacent 
decent sides. Wow, that looks messy. I'm so sorry. Okay, now I'm going to tell you right now, this complicated two sentences is kind of the whole point of this lesson. What we really want you kids to get is that if you have an equal perimeter, these all had the perimeter of 12, right? The one that would have the biggest area is the one that's closest to a square. So if you're ever trying to, I don't know, make a, a fence for your piggies and you want them to have the most space to run around, you would want to make it shaped like a square rather than a rectangle. Okay, so, all right, so let's go ahead and move on to number four, wait, yeah, number four. Um, okay, so a centimeter dot grid, draw all the possible rectangles with a perimeter of 22 centimeters and sides who are, whose lengths are whole centimeters. Label the lengths of the two adjacent sides of each rectangle. Okay, so we're talking a perimeter of 22. Now we're asking what's half of 22? So let's draw just an arrow because it's not really equal. So one half of a perimeter is equal to 11. So we're thinking of what things add up to 11. So I'm going to just start with 1. And then we're going to have to go 10 over, right? So this is 1. And 1 plus 10 is 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here, let me just erase that right there. Boop, boop, boop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And remember, we're not counting the dots, we're counting the lengths between the dots. And then this side is just going to be one, and then this side is also going to be ten. So, ten. All right. Now, what about two? That could be, um, let's see. One, two, and then two plus what is eleven? Nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Now let's do another one. Three. One, two, three. And then three plus what is eleven? Um, eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so three and eight. And then we could do four. Let's see, we're going to have to do it on its side a little bit over here. Um, so we'll do... Um, one, I'll do it in green, do it in purple, one, two, three, four, and then, that's four on this side, and then that'll be seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, so, that's not all of them. There's one more, but it's not going to fit on this sheet, so I'm going to have to fill in my chart and then go back. Okay, so I had a 1 and 10, and that would be an area of 1 times 10, which is 10 centimeters squared. And then we had a 2 and 9, and that would be... 2 times 9, which is 18 centimeters squared. And then we had a 3 and 8. And 3 times 8, think, 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 is 24 centimeters squared. And then we had a 4 and 7. 4 times 7, think, 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 28 centimeters squared. And now I'm going to erase these and fill in 
my last one, I think I could put it in right here. Thank you. Okay, let's do this one in green. So the last one will be five by six. So one, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to use up this space too. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Just ignore this little eight there. Whoop. Okay, so a five by six. Now this one is closest to a square, so what do you think that means for the area? That's right, it's going to be um, the biggest area because it's closest to a square. It's 30 square centimeters. So we can say once again, the one closest to a square has the most area. Okay. Good job. Sorry, it's super hard to write on this <laughs> iPad. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now this is talking about things with the same area. It's kind of like working backwards. Now instead of looking at um, factors that add up to half of the perimeter, this is actually a little bit easier. We just have to, I'm sorry, I didn't, I meant, I, bleh. I said factors. I meant to say add-ins. Now we're using factors that multiply to the area. So if we know, for example, on number seven, the area is 12, we just have to ask ourselves, what are things that multiply to 12, right? So there's 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4, right? Those are all things that multiply to 12. 5 doesn't get you 12, 6 is already right here in the 2 times 6. So we don't need to repeat that. So let's go ahead and draw that and see which ones would have the biggest perimeter. Okay, so 1 by 12. I hope that will fit on here. 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, it did. Good job. Just pretend that's straight. So 1 and 12, and 1 and 12... The perimeter for this one, 12 plus 12 is 24. So the 2 length plus 2 width equals perimeter. So 2 times 12 is 24. And the 2 widths is just 2. So the perimeter for this is going to be 26, the 24 plus 2. So I'll put that inside. P equals 26. And then I need that space, so I'm going to just erase that for now. Okay, now the next one we said was 2 times 6. So let's draw that over here. 1, 2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so two, oopsie, <laughs> no, that's not six, that's two. Silly me, there we go, two, this is six, and six. Okay, so with this one, our two length plus two width equals the perimeter. Our length, we'll say, is the six, and our width, we'll say, is the two, and we're just going to plug those into that formula there. Two times six is twelve. And 2 times 2 is 4, and 12 plus 4 is 16, right? So we'll put that um, P equals 16. All right, and I guess I could leave that top part because I'll reuse that again. And then this last one that we said 3 times 4. Let's go ahead and do that in yellow. So that would be 
one, two, three, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So three, four, three, four. So our two of our length, we'll say that's the four, plus two of our width, and that's the three, equals our perimeter. So two times four is eight, and two times three is six. Eight plus six is 14. So the perimeter for that one was 14. Okay. So let's just take a quick look. This one, the perimeter was 26. This one, the perimeter was 16. And this one, the perimeter was 14. So if I had asked you to make a, uh, a pen for some little piggies, and I didn't want you to use that much fence material, if I wanted you to try to save as much as you could, in order to give them the same amount of space, you could use the least amount of fence material with the most square-like pen. If we had a ton and I was like, just use it, I don't even care, then you could make a really long and skinny one and it would have the same area as a square one. Okay, so... So let's go ahead and fill in this chart. The two adjacent sides, we had the 1 and 12, and that gave us a perimeter of 26 centimeters. And you'll notice it's not square centimeters, and that's because the perimeter is just the length, right, all the way around the shape. So it's just talking about that one dimension, not two. Um, the next one was a 2 and 6. And for that one, the perimeter was 16. Did I get that right? Yeah. And then, for the last one, it was 3 and 4. And that perimeter was 14. So, the most... Square like had the smallest perimeter. The skinniest one had the biggest perimeter. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. I think this is the last one. Yes, it is. Okay, so. Same deal, we got an area of 18 square centimeters. So we have to think of things that multiply to 18. Well, there's 1 times 18. There's 2 times 9. And then there's 3 times... Do you know what it is? Yep, 6. Is there 4 times? No, 4 times 4 is 16, and then 4 times 5 is 20. Is there a 5? Well, 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times 4 is 20. No. And then 6, we're back here. So, it's just these three. So let's go ahead. I'm not sure if... I don't think I have 18 here, but we'll just pretend. Okay, so 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... We'll just pretend that went to 18. So this one won't work if you're counting. Um, but we can use our formula. Now that's, you know, a good thing to point out. Sometimes with a shape, you don't have the space to, like, physically draw out the entire thing and then count it up, or it might take forever to do so. But if you have your um, formula, it makes things a lot easier. For, so for this, your perimeter is your two length plus your two width. So, um, two times 18 plus two times one. Now, two times 18, you might be thinking, oh, I don't even know what that is. That's okay. You can use the area model where you do two times 10 and two times eight and add those together. So two times 10 is 20 and two times eight is 16 and 20 plus 16 is 36. Or you could just add up 18 plus 18, and you would also get 
36. Either way. That's what I love about math. It's so consistent. Okay, so 36. And then there's an easy one. 2 times 1. Yep, it's just 2. Alright, so our perimeter for this one, P equals 38. So, oof, that's a lot of fence, huh? P equals 38. I'll clean that up for a next one. Oh, boy. Okay, let me take a look at what it was again. Oh, yeah, 18. So, 2 times 9. This will fit. So, 1, 2... And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 9. So 2, 9, 2, 9. So we have our formula, 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So our length here, we'll say that's the 9, and the width is the 2. So 2 times 9 that's 18, and then 2 times 2, that's 4. Add those up, 18 plus 4, you can stick the 18 in your head, count on, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. So the perimeter for that one is 22, which is a lot less than that 38, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All right, and the last one is going to be the other factors that go to 18, which is 3 times 6. So 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, and 6. So we'll use our same formula up here. 2 times 6 plus 2 times 3. So 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 times 3 is... Six. So then uh, 12 plus 6 is 18. So that's funny. For this one, the area is 18 and the perimeter is 18. But the area is in cubic centimeters, or not <laughs> cubic square centimeters, whoops. Um, and then the, the perimeter is in linear or single dimension centimeters. So B equals 18. So let's go ahead and fill in our chart. So we had our 1 and 18, and that perimeter was 36 linear centimeters. And then we had 2 and 9, and that was 22. I almost wrote down 18. 22 centimeters. And then the last one was 3 and 6, and that one was 18 centimeters. So once again, the perimeter, the smallest perimeter is the one closest to a square. The one that is, um, we could write it differently, the, the skinniest one had the greatest perimeter. Alright, so uh, that's it for today, and after you've done this, you can go ahead and do the activity on Think Central. Alright, see you later. Bye-bye.